Hey, Mark Allen here. Um, and for the first time, I'm premiering my face, which means I've probably lost at least half of my two subscribers so far. Um, but what I wanted to do, though, was uh, kind of share a, an old guy's perspective on one aspect of comic book collecting, and that's uh, autographs, signatures. Um, big push these days toward authentication of signatures. And um, I'm one of those guys, I, I can remember... Uh, going to Comic Empire of Tulsa and pulling out books, pulling out uh, back issue, uh, back issues, uh, especially Marvel Team Up is on my mind. I can remember lots of issues of Marvel Team Up that had John Byrne's signature uh, already there. And it was always a treat to find, oh, John uh, uh, signed this one. And that's really cool. Today, that almost never happens, almost. One of these days I'll tell a story about um, a fan sketch of John's of Frankenstein that I found in a Foom magazine uh, that I got for really nice one for dirt cheap on eBay. But anyway, um, he, I, uh, I have a few signed comics I was going to show, um, and none of them have certificates of authenticity. Now, obviously, I've bought some over the years that do have, uh, and that's great. If they have a certificate of authenticity, that's great. But what kind of started this was, or started my line of thought on this was, Recently, I sold an Avengers Annual Number 10, first appearance of Rogue. It was signed by Michael Golden. I had him sign it myself uh, at a con, and uh, that that's a book that was that was really has been off and on hot for the last several years. I sold it on eBay. It was a very fine plus copy, um, signed by Michael Golden. No COA. Twelve bucks. Twelve bucks is what I got for this thing, and I remember thinking, that's a tad askew. Uh, that's a little off, if you ask me. But, hey, look, I had some friends tell me, basically younger guys than me, that are like, hey, listen, it's, it's about authenticity. People want to know that it's an authentic signature. I guess part of my question is, does that matter to all collectors? It obviously doesn't matter to me. I'm, a, I'm assuming there's other guys out there like me, probably older guys, who just like the fact that they're crea they're, some of their favorite creators have signed their books. I've got a Mr. Miracle and all of these uh, have were signed locally that I'll show you um, except for one that I bought on eBay and I'll get to that in a minute but here's a Mr. Miracle special from 1987 that Steve Rude drew and of course watch I'll lose the focus on it probably but uh, there's the Steve Rude signature at the bottom of the of the page I had a friend get that signed for me and um, great book great creator Steve Rude uh, great artist uh, Nexus if you've never read any of the Nexus series, go get them because they're really good. One of the best superhero um, series of the '80s, as well as kind of a it's kind of a superhero meets space opera meets a Star Wars cast of characters in there. I um, mean, there's just all kinds of neat stuff to find because, of course, it takes place off in space, and it's a great series. Uh, Steve Rude, primary penciler through through all of it. Um, some of the older guys will recognize this, uh, X-Men X Men Annual Number 9, drawn by Art Adams, and of course, that is also signed, uh, let's see if I can, there we go, Art Adams, uh, September of 97, at DEF CON in Tulsa. Um, also, you know, so that was, a, that was a neat one. Now, this was part of a two-part story, many of you will know, uh, that continued here. <laughs> The New Mutant Special, which was a big old thick uh, wraparound cover book that uh, also got signed by Arthur Adams. Um, that that was an interesting day because Art Adams turned out to be, and we could go a long time with this line of discussion, but Art Adams turned out to be one of those really nice creators. I have a good friend of mine who says, uh, no, he wasn't nice to me the time I met him, but here's here was my experience with Art Adams. Is he, he, um, I brought a stack of my own books. I was a vendor, and I was selling comics and with some other friends. And uh, I was, um, I brought a stack of books to him. I said, "Now, Mr. Adams, these are my own personal books. These are going into my own personal collection. I won't be selling these." And um, I said, I, "I guarantee you that. I just want you to sign them." There was a stack of probably 12, 15 books, and he said, "You know what? You can sell them if you want." It's not going to bother me. Go ahead and sell them. If it helps you out, sell them. Now, I'm not saying do that to Arthur Adams at a, at a con, 
Uh, I'm not saying that's a good good line of uh, uh, thought as you go in to meet him, but uh, that's that's the way he was that day, that particular day. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, okay, here's a Green Arrow number one from 2001, signed by Phil Hester with also a little head sketch on there, and uh, which is kind of interesting. Actually, that was given to me by a friend because it's a book I never even read. So I never I never read. Uh, that the Kevin Smith uh, run of Green Arrow. Now the, this last one I'm going to show you because I didn't plan on a real long video here. But the last one I'm going to show you is kind of my uh, the cream of my how do I say this uncertified signed comic crop. Uh, I'll never be able to say that again. Big Rom fan. In fact, if you uh, if you if you ever liked Rom Space Night, go back into my videos. I have a uh, a video a video review of Rom Space Night. Uh, from back in the day but um, here's my ROM number one now this was the one I bought on eBay all right ROM number one no certificate of authentication authentication authenticity there you go signed by appear uh, if appearances are not deceiving and these are I've had friends that look at these and I've been looking at signatures I've been collecting for over 40 years so I, I look at these signatures and I say, those look like the real thing. This I probably will have certified one day, just looked at. But from appearances, Stan Lee, Sal Buscema, and Jim Shooter signed the first page of that ROM. In Sharpie, yes, it's unfortunately in the Sharpie, and there is some bleed through. But uh, on the other side of the rabid fanboy, ask me if I care. If that turns out to be actually Lee and Buscema and uh, Shooter who signed that, which I believe they are, I believe it's authentic, uh, then I don't care if there's a little bit of bleed through. And you'll understand where I'm coming from on that. Um, anyway, do you care if your autographs are, uh, if your signed comics are authenticated? Do you care if there's a little piece of paper on there that says, hey, so-and-so actually signed this? Because I don't. Uh, because the things I get signed for the most part, I do some flipping, but that's when I find stuff in dollar boxes that I know sells for more on eBay or such as that. But stuff I get signed, I get signed for me. And uh, that's just my, my take on it. But what do you think? Give me your opinion. Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.